Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, hello and welcome to Renovation Sport Fish. This is episode 14 and if you've been following along, I've been covering all the projects I did in the year 2014. Uh, this episode's going to wrap those up, and it's all going to be about fiberglass. Well, in this segment of how'd you do that, I'm going to be fiberglassing on the mock-up. So let's take a look at the mock-up and um, the materials that I'm going to be using. All right, so here's the first component we're going to be fiberglassing. This represents the uh, flybridge deck, and I sidewall support piece. We worked on that in the last segment of uh, how to do that. And then uh, this one here is going to represent the um, sidewall. Okay, so what we're basically going to do here is uh, cut the cloth to fit the pieces. I'm going to use this uh, electric shear. good up here and just hang on its own so usually I would put um, some tape up there to hold it but I really don't think I have to it's kind of holding on its own sometimes I'll kind of vertical piece I'll put some tape on here but uh, I'm not gonna have to do that here so that's good dry to the touch. It's a little little bit tacky, just barely tacky, so it's, it's a good time. It's still green. So this is where I take a razor blade. We're going to trim all this excess off. Uh, hopefully it goes well. pieces are dry it's like actually two days later uh, could have done it the next day but uh, I was busy editing episode 13 uh, so they're ready to go and um, today I'm going to sand these down now uh, this piece here I'm actually going to take it off the whole contraption just sand it flat um, I'm not even going to do it on camera 
But um, I'll sand this one with dual action sander with 80 grit paper. But before I do that, I have to scrub both of them with a scotch Brite pad and some water just to get rid of any amine blush that may have formed on there. That's kind of a waxy coating that um, sometimes forms. Sometimes I don't really notice it, but I scrub it anyways uh, just to make sure. And that just comes off with a little scrub and a little water. And then we can sand it. So we'll do that first. That's it for the sanding and this this area right here probably, probably took me uh, probably twice as long as this part it's all the detail and when you put the epoxy on you know it always flows off these outside corners so it's not as it's not as thick there as it would be on these nice flat surfaces and so this is where you're gonna what I call burn through when you get down to the weave and your camera's not going to pick this up at all, but I can feel, I just use my hand, I can feel the weave right here. So the rest of it's fine. And this piece, you know, it's probably not going to pick it up, but you might be able to see it. Over in this area, in this top corner, I can really feel the weave, and I can really see it. And then there's some other areas here that you're probably not going to be able to see. But there was wrinkles in the fabric, and I knew these were going to show up when I sanded. So I left them there on purpose, but I just had that fabric balled up in a ball in a box. It was just extra. And I knew that was going to happen because it's happened to me on the boat. Um, and so I caught the weave a little right here. So other than that, it's pretty good. There's a few pinholes, which you always get. So I'm going to, I'm going to, even though it's a mock-up, I'm going to put a couple coats of epoxy on both of these pieces and then, uh, and then I'll re-sand them. So okay, so it's the next day. Uh, two coats of epoxy are all dried. I have to scrub both pieces with scotch Brite and water to get rid of any of the blush on there. Um, I'm not going to film any of that because I've already shown you that. So I'll scrub these two pieces, sand them down with 80 grit like I did before, and uh, then I'll uh, show the pieces being attached together and we'll do another uh, little small fillet. Okay, so we're ready to attach these two pieces together. Um, I've already pre-fitted the um, sidewall piece as you can see and I've um, got all my materials and things that I'm going to be using. Now this is actually a mechanical pencil. It's not a pen if you're wondering. Uh, and then everything else we're going to use there. Uh, and I'll show you the back side of the piece. I mean, it's not important what's going on back here. I could attach it with anything, but just so you see, I've just got a couple screws back there that I'm going to uh, use. And of course, for myself, uh, I'm wearing a dust mask for the mixing up the colloidal silica and, of course, spare gloves. So we'll set up the camera and we'll um, uh, put these two pieces together and make a fillet.
Okay, the two pieces are together. There's a fillet there. Uh, so the only thing really left to do is to let this dry, sand it. Maybe you have to put some epoxy right on the fillet there again just to smooth it out and then re-sand it, kind of like I did before. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it completed. Now the next time you're going to see this mock-up, I'm going to be installing a mahogany cap on it. So now that you've seen me do fiberglass and how I do it, um, I'm going to show some pictures of the fiberglassing of the flybridge uh, front walls and side walls. Now before I could fiberglass these, I had to fair out the panels and round the edges uh, between the panels. So once I did that, then it was on to the fiberglassing. So here's just a couple photos of, um, of that process. Okay, now we get into a little fairing and contouring of the cabinet sides before I fiberglass them. Now, if you want to see a little demonstration on fairing, you can watch episode 13. It's got a whole little demonstration there for you. Um, so I'll start with the side window uh, walls first. Um, those are fairly easy. Um, the original opening for the windows had a piece of aluminum trim. I didn't want to polish it. I didn't want to drill all the holes for the screws to hold them on. So I decided to eliminate that piece of trim. So that meant uh, cleaning up the rough edge that the factory left there and filling in all the screw holes. So once that was done, uh, I just was able to take a router with a roundover bit and go around the whole uh, perimeter of the opening and um, then clean it up with a little sandpaper and that was it for that. Uh, when it came to all the other edges, uh, they had a much larger radius and the panels weren't at 90 degree angles so I couldn't use a router. So I had to hand form all of those. And the way I did that was drew a line kind of equal distance on each panel and then just took a long sanding board with 30 grit sandpaper on it and just roughed a, a round edge between the two lines. And then I went over it with some 80 grit uh, and did the same thing to clean it up and a few areas I had to add a little fairing compound and uh, sand that down. But um, yeah, that's what you're going to uh, see here. So now I'm going to show some photos of the windshield and cabin sidewalls fiberglass. I ran into an issue uh, that I'm going to go over. It's probably like halfway through all the uh, pictures. So uh, yeah, here we go. to this uh, just not fiberglassing but just applying epoxy in general outdoors in uh, 
you know, the regular environment out there. Um, and it has to do with the rising or falling of the temperature while you're working on your project. Now, on this particular project, it was in October, it was a cool night, I'm in my little plastic greenhouse bubble working away, and the temperature rose pretty quickly. Now, when that happens, the air in the wood um, has to go somewhere when it expands, and normally you don't see that, but if you're putting epoxy on there, you're going to see it, and you see it in the form of air bubbles. Now, if you're babysitting it and you're there, you can just brush over the air bubbles every once in a while, and you can kind of minimize it, but if you walk away like I did and come back later to put the next coat of epoxy on and you see this um, air bubble situation, it looks pretty nasty, uh, you gotta deal with it. Um, you know, I dealt with it by sanding the whole thing down and you had all these pinholes and then I made like a slurry of epoxy and kind of spread it all on there and had to sand it. So it's just extra work. So sometimes you can't avoid this, you know, you gotta do the project when you have the time, but sometimes you can. So if you can do the project when the temperature is going down, that's gonna help tremendously. You're not gonna have that problem. If you do it when the temperature is going up, you could have that problem. So it's just something to note if you're applying epoxy. Uh, at the end of this part of these clips here, I am going to show some sanding of the pieces as well with some 80 grit. So that's how it's going to close out. But now I'm back to the um, back to the fiberglass. Well, that's going to do it for this episode, and that's also going to do it for the project for 2014. So I hope you enjoyed um, all the videos up until now, and um, come back for the next one. So until then, have a good one, and we'll see you soon right here on Renovation Sportfish.